I am in Springfield, Illinois at Oak Ridge Cemetery and behind me is the tomb of President Abraham Lincoln. He is one of the most important and most beloved figures in all of American and even world history. He has so many fascinating stories and uh, he's always personally interested me so much that I have visited just about everywhere connected with him in the country. Um, but this is the final resting place of the martyred president, so we're going to go check this out. The 16th president of the United States is laid to rest under this magnificent 117 foot tall obelisk on a hill towards the back of Oak Ridge Cemetery. By April of 1865, when the Civil War was clearly won, President Lincoln had been very well esteemed, even by former critics, for successfully navigating the country through its most turbulent time. Lee's surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia on April 9th assured this victory. However, on the evening of April 14th, 1865, the President and First Lady went to see a show at Ford's Theater, where the President would be shot in the back of the head. He passed away the next morning on April 15th. Abraham Lincoln, while the third President to die in office, was the first to be assassinated, particularly under the circumstances of just winning a four-year-long brutal and costly war against the Southern States. This was one of the most horrid and unexpected events imaginable. Mary selected this site against the desires of the people of Springfield who wanted him to be buried elsewhere. His remains were originally placed in a temporary vault behind the hill, which we'll see soon, while this larger tomb was being constructed. Construction began in 1871 under the supervision of architect Larkin G. Mead, and it was completed in 1874. The tomb itself is built of main granite with a terrace that unfortunately has been closed off for a long time. The central bronze standing Lincoln sculpture, as well as the four bronze sculpture groupings of Civil War infantry, navy, artillery, and cavalry were all created by the architect himself. Directly in front of the tomb is a bronze reproduction of Gutzon Borglum's massive Lincoln head that's currently in the crypt of the U.S. Capitol. Gutzon Borglum did go on to sculpt a much larger Lincoln head on Mount Rushmore. This one is unique because there's a tradition that if you rub Abe's gilded schnoz, it will bring you good luck. That happens when human oils touch bronze repeatedly, and no one really knows how this tradition started. During construction, the bodies of Lincoln and his three deceased children were placed inside the burial chamber, and at completion, Lincoln was interred in a big marble sarcophagus at the center of that chamber. Two criminals nearly succeeded in robbing Lincoln's body from the tomb at night. They were planning to sneak it out, hide it in the Indiana dunes, and hold Lincoln's corpse for ransom. However, during their intrusion, one of them accidentally fired off a gun, and that caught the tomb custodian's attention, and they were luckily caught. In reaction to that, Lincoln's body was secretly moved and hid below ground under wooden debris. In 1887, Abraham and now Mary were reburied in a brick vault beneath the burial room. By 1895, the tomb had fallen into disrepair, so the state took over and it was restored. During that time, all five family members were buried in a vault outside the tomb. After that, Lincoln was put back in his original sarcophagus, but Robert Lincoln requested that he be moved to a final, final resting place. So a concrete vault at least 10 feet below the burial chamber was built, and that is where Lincoln's remains rest in peace today. The Lincoln Tomb was declared as one of the first National Historic Landmarks in 1960. Now let's head inside and pay respects to the great emancipator in his grandiose tomb, which you would probably think was way too excessive. This is the rotunda, with a bronze prototype of Daniel Chester French's seated Lincoln statue, the one that is at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. The tomb's interior was redesigned in the 1930s to the Art Deco style, which definitely wasn't a thing in Lincoln's time, but I do think it looks great. The walls and floors are made of marble from Arkansas, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Missouri, Utah, Spain, France, and Belgium, and there are two corridors connecting the rotunda with the burial chamber. Each of them have four mini Lincoln statues representing him in various stages of life. This is Lincoln the Ranger. It depicts him as captain of a company in the Illinois militia during the Black Hawk War. This statue is unique to the tomb. This is Lincoln the Soldier, which shows what he may have looked like during his brief tenure as a soldier during the 1832 Black Hawk War. 
in which he never saw combat. This is a smaller version of the large sculpture in Dixon, Illinois. This one is Lincoln the Circuit Rider, another statue that is unique to the tomb. Lincoln was a lawyer on the 8th Judicial Circuit Court for about 10 years. He traveled the 450 mile route by annually, visiting and arguing in county courthouses. This is Standing Lincoln by the famed sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens. The full version of this is in Chicago's Lincoln Park. It depicts Lincoln just before he is about to give an important speech. This bronze plaque is engraved with Lincoln's farewell address to the citizens of Springfield just before he left his hometown for the presidency in Washington, D.C. He was never to return to Springfield alive, and in it he said, Here my children have been born, and one is buried. I now leave not knowing when or whether ever I may return with a task before me greater than that which rested upon Washington. Without the assistance of the divine being who ever attended him, I cannot succeed. And now we enter the burial chamber, the final resting place of the Lincoln family. Always gives me chills walking in here. This is the large 7-ton marble cenotaph above Lincoln's grave. He is buried 10 feet below under concrete to avoid any more robberies. So this is about as close as we can get to him. The walls of the burial room are made of black and white marble, and the ceiling is made of gold leaf. It is a very art deco room. Seven of the flags represent the seven states that either Abraham Lincoln lived in or where his ancestors came from, the others being a U.S. and presidential flags. When Abraham Lincoln passed from this earth in the back bedroom of the Peterson boarding house, Secretary of War Edwin Stanton reportedly said, Now he belongs to the ages. And there that quotation is emblazoned in the tomb. Between the 17 times Lincoln's remains were moved, it was opened five times to make sure that he was still in there. The last time he was checked on was in 1901. It was said that a harsh choking smell arose when they opened the casket. Due to all the embalming fluid used to keep him intact and from smelling really bad for the weeks long funeral, he was still perfectly recognizable and well preserved. His beard and mole were still there but his eyebrows were gone, and he still had visible bruises from the gunshot wound. As Lincoln is basically mummified now, he would still probably be recognizable if he were dug up and viewed today. On the back wall is the crypt where the other family members are buried. Behind that wall rests First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln. She did come from a wealthy Lexington, Kentucky family. She was very intelligent and very active in the political scenes of Springfield and Washington. The deaths of her husband and three children buried within this room are among the worst offenses that traumatized her and damaged her mental health, so much so that her only living son, Robert, had her committed to an insane asylum. While she was able to get out and get her possessions and rights back, she was even more hurt and passed away in 1882 after an exhaustive and hard life. Eddie Lincoln was their second born son, Little is known about him, but he did die of tuberculosis in 1850 when he was only four years old, and that of course had a terrible impact on his two parents. Willie was the third born, and he did live long enough to go to the White House, which he very much enjoyed. However, in early 1862, he came down with typhoid fever and died in the Lincoln bedroom. Of course, in the midst of the pressures of the presidency and the Civil War, this was an unbearable loss for his parents. His remains were temporarily buried in Washington, and they were brought back with Lincoln's body on the funeral train, and were also placed in the original receiving vault as well. Tad was the last son of the Lincolns, who was notoriously unrestrained. He did outlive his father. He was actually at a different theater the night he was shot, and if you can imagine, he was greatly upset by his father's murder. At age 18 in July of 1871, little Tad, as he was affectionately known, died of possibly tuberculosis or some other disease at a Chicago hotel, and his remains were moved here. Mary was too distraught to make the trip to his funeral here, as well as Abraham Lincoln's. 
Just outside the chamber is this memorial to their firstborn, Robert Lincoln, who managed to survive past adulthood and did pretty well for himself, as opposed to the bad luck that would befall his other family members in the adjacent chamber. He was a very successful business lawyer, ambassador, and secretary of war. He died at the ripe old age of 82 in 1926, and he chose to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery instead of here. The Abraham Lincoln rests just below this room. It's absolutely humbling and amazing to have the honor of visiting this chamber. There is a bronze plaque of the Gettysburg Address, perhaps Lincoln's most famous speech despite its short length, and perhaps one of the greatest speeches ever uttered. In the other corridor, there are more statues, this one being Lincoln the Debater, showing him engaged in one of the seven Lincoln-Douglas debates with Stephen Douglas as part of the 1858 Illinois Senate election. Lincoln lost the highly publicized race, but did go on to beat Douglas for the presidency two years later. There is a larger version of the statue at the site of the Freeport-Illinois debate. This is a statue of seated Lincoln, not French's Lincoln Memorial version, but an earlier one by Adolph Weinman. The big version of the statue sits in a roundabout near Lincoln's birthplace in Hodgenville, Kentucky. This is Lincoln the Lawyer by famed sculptor Lorado Taft. The full-scale version of this is in Urbana, Illinois, a town where Lincoln practiced law on the circuit. This is the statue of Standing Lincoln by Daniel Chester French. It depicts him in a contemplative state just before he gives the Gettysburg Address for the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery at Gettysburg. French's full statue is at the Nebraska State Capitol. This tomb to the martyred president is such a beautiful and fitting memorial to him. I cannot emphasize enough the fact that all Americans should come here and pay their respects. Right before exiting, you pass by the second inaugural, in which he said, with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive to finish the work we are in. That is the old Tomb Custodian's residence. It was built after the state took over in 1895. For over 75 years, a custodian and guard of the Lincoln Tomb lived inside this home. Nearby, there is a plaque recognizing the three Revolutionary War Patriots buried here at Oak Ridge. On the back side of the tomb at the base of the hill is the original receiving vault where the remains of Abraham Lincoln and Willie were originally placed. The final ceremony of the over three week Lincoln funeral took place right out here. That was obviously an excruciatingly somber experience. This was the already existing public temporary holding vault of remains where bodies would be stored until a grave were built. Eddie was transferred in here from a different cemetery the week before. Abraham Lincoln was in here from May 4th to December 21st of 1865. It is now empty, just a preserved relic of the past. Across from the receiving vault is this old tower which holds an important relic. That tablet of stone is the one upon which the remains of the quote illustrious president were first placed in the receiving vault. 
After December 21st, the remains were moved up to another temporary vault that was built for him a little farther up the hill. It was destroyed, but this stone marks the spot where Abraham Lincoln was buried from December 21st, 1865 to 1874, when he was moved into the big tomb behind it for the first time. The president's remains have hopefully ceased their journey as he is now safely stored for eternity beneath this spectacular monument to his strength, character, actions, and leadership during the tumultuous slavery and civil war crises. Here's a marker dedicated to the custodians of Lincoln's tomb. You can see he has an old plaque depicting Abraham Lincoln looking up the moon. It's neat. Here's the big old tomb of Governor John R. Tanner. It's got a dome and everything. Looks very blocky, but uh, definitely an interesting mausoleum. The tomb looks like the Pantheon and you can see it has a hole in the top of the dome. It's very open air. There's a bust of the governor above his grave. This is a really interesting tomb. Here's an interesting one. It's all black granite. And uh, there's no names on any of these markers. It's very eerie. It's called the Abbey. It was built in 1912. And uh, this is the road down to Lincoln's tomb. Millions of people have visited over the years. But here's an interesting grave as well. The grave of Roy Bertelli, also known as Mr. Accordion. So Roy liked playing the accordion and he wanted to be buried in this cemetery. So he bought this little uh, sliver of land here. It's in a very prominent location, but the cemetery didn't want him to be here. And the transaction actually went through by accident. So Oak Ridge Cemetery in the city threatened to sue him over this grave. As you can see, as long as his lifetime dedication to the accordion he was a World War II veteran, so he found that a little disrespectful. So he ended up paying for an above ground grave that's very obvious and very distracting from the tomb itself as a big middle finger to the cemetery in the city. And Mr. Accordion isn't even buried here. He was buried in a different cemetery, so there's no one here. Just his lasting troll here at the cemetery in the shadow of the tomb of Abraham Lincoln. Pretty interesting. In another section of Oak Ridge Cemetery are the Illinois State War Memorials, which makes this cemetery complete like a mini national mall. This is the relatively small World War I memorial, topped with a colored globe. Over 5,000 men from Illinois died in the Great War. This is the World War II Illinois Veterans Memorial. Nearly a million Illinois residents served in uniform during World War II, and over 22,000 were killed. The memorial was dedicated in 2004. This black granite slab memorializes the Eastern Theater and lists various battles. This is the Pacific side. What's really cool about this one is the 22 ton white globe, 12 feet in diameter. Between the two sides are engraved quotations. Because of the two sides and the quotes, this does remind me a lot of the National World War II Memorial in DC, which was dedicated in the same year. I really appreciate that they have this one. General McAuliffe's epic response to German demands to surrender, he simply responded, nuts. What a hero. This is the cenotaph to the 22,000 Illinois servicemen killed during the war. 
That is the Purple Heart Memorial in honor of all those who were injured. This is the Illinois Korean War Memorial, which was dedicated a little earlier in 1996. 1,748 Illinoisians were killed during the Forgotten War. This one is also pretty unique because of the giant bronze bell with figures to represent each branch of the armed services. The bell serves as a carillon, but it didn't play anything while I was here. The names of all those killed are listed and there's an interesting quote that reflects the war. It's a war we can't win, we can't lose, we can't quit. This tablet is a relief of American soldiers marching during the Battle of Chosin, which occurred after China entered on the side of North Korea. This long battle during the winter of 1950 was plain and simply put brutal, and eventually it did cause the US to retreat and the UN troops to completely withdraw from North Korea. There were over 17,000 US and UN casualties as a result of Chosin. The final memorial is the Illinois Vietnam Veterans Memorial which is the oldest from 1988. It's very large and elaborate with a circular layout of granite slabs. On top there is an eternal flame, a concept originating from the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in France and was used at the grave of another assassinated president, John F. Kennedy. The Lincoln Tomb and Oak Ridge Cemetery are awe-inspiring testaments to the life and times of the Great Emancipator, alongside great tributes to succeeding wars. Please check out my other Lincoln videos, and thanks for watching!